The ability to create site menus or vertical headers is a great addition that increases the possibilities of the builder. With the help of this feature, which we added in version 27.1, you will be able to create various layouts of both site menus. Sliding, always visible, and vertical headers. Just look at these examples and think that this is just the beginning, a small part of what you will be able to build with the sidebar menu builder we just released. It's worth noting that the sidebar menu can be created separately, adapting directly to various devices, such as desktop, tablet or mobile. I know that many of you have been waiting for this opportunity. After all, it was your votes that decided that from now on you can create even more interesting layouts. So I don't want to extend this introduction any longer and let's jump right in. What's up guys, it's Albert from Muffin Group. In this video, I would like to take you and tell you about the options that are available in our latest tool, Sidebar Menu Builder. Personally, I call it sometimes Vertical Header Builder Interchangeable, which you will soon find out. After watching this video, I wish you could create headers like the one you see on the screen right now. It's worth mentioning that Sidebar Menu Builder is based on well-known B-Builder, what means that you can use any of its elements in a sidebar. This is certainly a nod to those who do not like to be limited in any way. To create sidebar menu, we have to go to the templates, just like when creating any other thing like header, footer, mega menu pop-ups, etc. Let's add new template. Now, from the list we have to select sidebar menu and type its name underneath. Great, we're being redirected to the Bay Builder now where all the magic happens. Let me quickly create some simple sidebar menu and I will get back to you soon. Alright, so we have our sidebar menu ready and we can go for all the available options. The ones you see at the first glance are the same as for any other theme plate, so if you didn't have the chance to watch my tutorial regarding the BE Builder, I will leave you the link to the tutorial in the left top corner, but also in the description down there below, so you can watch it later. What I would like to focus on and what largely distinguishes individual templates from each other are the options. In this case, the sidebar menu options. You will find them under this icon. After clicking on, we have all available options for the sidebar menu. Let's start from the settings tab. The first option is visibility. And here we can switch between two options. The first one is on click. When we choose this option, our sidebar menu will be off canvas and would be triggered on a click. This option works with many burger element which is available for headers only. By the way, if you didn't watch my video regarding header builder, I will leave you the link in the left top corner of that video but also down there in the description. If we go to the settings of that element under sidebar heading, you will find open sidebar option. Here you can check which sidebar should be open on menu burger click. Ok, let's get back to the sidebar menu builder. The second option on the drop down list of visibility is always visible. This option is perfect if you want to create vertical header, for example as the one you actually see on the screen right now. 
What this option basically do is that it keeps sidebar always visible and stick to the edge of the screen, left or right. As you probably noticed already, after choosing this option, additional option appeared underneath, header visibility. Within this option, you can choose whenever you want header to be visible or not. When hidden option is set, there is no header on page, but when visible, we can see both the header and the sidebar menu. The next option is entrance animation. Here, we can choose between the default one and move content off the screen. Let's see the difference between both options in real example. As you can see, when default set, Sidebar menu cover content when open it. But when second option is set, the whole content moves along with sliding sidebar menu. The next option is close button. This one should be pretty obvious. It's about the close button. You can make it visible or hidden. Also, you can easily style it underneath under design close button section. We can easily set its alignment, size, offset or border radius. You can also set its color in normal state and on hover. Let's go up again. The next option is close on overlay click. This option lets you close sidebar menu whenever you click out of its container. This option can be enabled or disabled. The next option is browser scroll when side menu is open. This one enables or disables browser native scroll bar. If, for example, you don't want users to scroll the content behind the sidebar, when mouse is out of the sidebar menu, simply enable this option. Otherwise, just disable it. All right, we can move to the design tab now. The first option here lets you set sidebar position. You can choose between left and right. Pretty simple and obvious, right? The next sidebar option is its width. Here, you can define how wide the sidebar is supposed to be. It's worth mentioning that you can set different values and units per device. For example, on desktop you would like to be 600 pixels, but on mobile, 30% instead. This gives you infinite possibilities. The next option is content position. Let me show you the difference. The top one, stick content to the top, center to center, but bottom to the bottom. The last one is space between. This one lets you make something you see right now on the screen. It works only when you have different sections as it adds same amount of space between sections. All right, let's move on. The next option for sidebar is background color. This one lets you set any color you like using built-in color picker. The next one is padding. As it goes, it lets you add padding to the sidebar. Underneath the padding, we have box shadow where we can set nice looking box shadow if we need it. The next option is Z-index. Useful when, for example, you have third-party plugins that add something to the edge of the screen and its fixed position, like maybe Facebook icon or something like that. In such case, you may decide if you want the sidebar to cover such element or not. We have already explained close buttons, so there is no need to do so again. And the last one is overlay. Here we have two options, background color and blur. The first one lets you set background color for the content that is behind the sidebar menu. Let's set the color and see how it looks like in frontend. As you can see, I have the color I just set, but blur gives a nice look of blurred content behind. Let's have a look on how it looks like in reality. That's it for the sidebar menu options. I hope that from now on, you would be able to make astonishing sidebar menus or vertical headers. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If so, I recommend to watch another video where I shown how to create a vertical mega menu with the BA Builder. And as always, thanks for watching and remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time we release a new video. And if you have more questions, please visit our support center at support.muffingroup.com.